Spotlight is a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. It seeks to spotlight people, places, and events from around the Diocese of Youngstown that promote the new gospel of joy called for by Pope Francis. Your program host is Father James Corda. Hello and welcome to this edition of Spotlight. I'm Father Jim Corda. Today we're going to talk with Father Dave Bergner, who is the Vicar for Social Concerns for the Diocese of Youngstown. And Father Dave, it's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here with you. You know, we're gonna talk uh, not just about Catholic charities and Im immigration and other issues, but uh, we're gonna talk about the whole work of Catholic charities and why it's so important and, and how it's, uh, it's, um, it, it has evolved over the many years as part of uh, one of the important arms of the Catholic Church. But before we do that, let's uh, kind of give the folks that are with us a little background into you because you're, you're fairly new to the diocese and I think it would be good for them to get to know you a little bit better. Well, first of all, of course, I, I come as a Salvatorian father, which is a, a religious community in the church uh, we're very missionary oriented, being in about 45 different countries around the world. And so it's kind of that missionary flavor that I bring with me, uh, hopefully, to this assignment in the diocese. What is the charism, in particular, of the Salvatorians? Um, our charism is connected to our mission, of course. And our mission is to proclaim and teach by all ways and means the goodness and kindness of the Savior. So it's kind of in keeping with the, uh, I think the spiritual message of our Pope Francis mm -hmm. in terms of compassion uh, to those in need. As a result of that mission, a number of us are in social work as I am. Mm -hmm. uh, we also have poor parishes within the Southeast part of the United States and uh, mission parishes throughout the world. So primarily, you would consider the Salvatorians a mission order? A mission order uh, in most uh, countries. Uh, here in this country, uh, we are in parishes, okay. but generally our parishes are poor. Uh, they're in rural as well as urban areas. And, uh, but I think our approach uh, to evangelization is very missionary in nature. Well, what's interesting is that really would your charism and your, your life and vocation really lends itself to this work of Catholic Charities that you're involved with here in the diocese in particular. Um, we know that in the work of Catholic Charities, there's lots of issues. There's lots of things that, that your office works with. What are some of those issues that we could highlight before we talk about any specifics? Um, Again, I, I always go back to, as I did in the mission of, of my community, of my religious community, the, the, the mission of Catholic Charities, mm -hmm. which is to provide service to those in need, advocate for justice, and then call on others to do the same, both in terms of being involved with us in serving people directly, as well in supporting those kinds of activities especially um, politically, that can improve the lives of, of poor people and people who are struggling, working people in our community. In, in your experience, um, especially more recently, um, and with the climate of what's going on, not only in our country, but in our world, uh, how is the work that you're involved with and the work of charities become more urgent nowadays? I think uh, the work has become more urgent because the needs of people have become more urgent. Uh, as you probably know, um, uh, people have not yet recovered from the Great Recession. And that's uh, especially true uh, in the Mahoning Valley, where our unemployment statistics tend to be much higher than the rest, uh, not only of the state of Ohio, but the rest of the country. So uh, what we see is a number of people who approach us on a daily basis who are in need of emergency assistance. Um, they've been out of a job for a while. Yeah. Their rent is overdue. 
uh, utilities have been shut off, sure. and sometimes uh, an unexpected medical expense has come into the picture, which puts them so far behind the eight ball that they come to our door. And, and we have 12 offices th uh, throughout the, uh, the diocese. Mm -hmm. And uh, our biggest single program that's common to all of our offices is the program that we call emergency assistance, mm -hmm. where people in immediate need can come to us and expect help. Well, I would think that, um, that there's lots of people that don't come for help, that probably need help. And, and I would think that the people who do come, um, it's difficult probably for them to do so, don't you think? It almost takes uh, humility and, and almost like kind of a, uh, getting rid of one's pride to say, I really need this, I need this assistance, and how important it is for them to just do that. It's a, a special challenge for people like that because uh, many of them are finding themselves in these circumstances for the very first time. Mm -hmm. And um, so uh, it takes a lot of encouragement uh, on the part of their clergy, their family, and neighbors to uh, come and see us. But we're there for them. And our, we consider our core value as being one of hospitality and welcoming. And I think once they, they uh, enter into our door, they'll feel this almost immediately. Sure. And what's interesting too is, you know, when we think of Catholic charities, uh, some people get the wrong impression that we only help Catholics, but we help uh, a lot of other people of different faiths and no faiths at all. Absolutely. I would say 90% of the people we serve are non-Catholic. And so, you know, we serve them not because they're Catholic, but because we are Catholic and we see this as part of our mission. Mm -hmm. The reason we're doing this is we're responding to our Lord's call to service, mm -hmm. to love not only God the Father with our whole heart, our whole mind, and our whole soul, but that second part of the two great commandments, to love our neighbor as ourselves, mm -hmm and we look at every man, woman, and child as our neighbor. And if they're in need, we at Catholic Charities are here for them. We're gonna talk a little bit more specifically about uh, what Catholic Charities does uh, and also some of the other um, areas of, of your department that, that really uh, have been coming to the forefront that uh, we would like to inform the folks that are with us about. But before we do that, we're gonna take a quick break. Uh, stay with us, we'll be right back. Johnsons enjoy Friday dinners out, nothing fancy, just time together to reconnect as family. They make sure others eat as well. By giving to Catholic Charities of Youngstown, the Johnsons join other angels who care for those in need, regardless of religion or race. Show your wings with a gift to Catholic Charities, changing lives one family at a time, providing housing, emergency financial assistance, senior services, and more. Give now at ccdoy.org. My name is Sister Mary Claudina, and I run a home for abandoned children. I want to take care of children who have no parents because luckily I come from a very loving family. There are, there are eight of us. And I remember when one of my cousins got sick and she called my mom and said, Mom, the doctor has said that um, I might not have too long to live. Will you please raise my three children for me? I remember we had a meeting at home and my dad called a meeting and my mom was explaining to all of us. And her, my father said, you know, this powerful word, she said, he said, we already have eight. What is three more? We learn to care for each other, to love each other, to fight among each other, to make up, to forgive, to uh, just just to be a family. And I think that's what I um, I learned from home, and I wanted to to share that with children who do not have that love and that opportunity, just to know what a family is all about. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm talking with Father Dave Bergner, who is the Vicar for Social Concerns for the Diocese of Youngstown. You know, one of the issues that really has uh, been in the news nowadays, and, and one that I think many Catholics in particular are not familiar with, is this whole uh, immigration issue. Uh, sometimes we don't like to talk about it, but, but issues are there because uh, 
humankind is involved in many different things and sometimes we do things that aren't that great uh, and yet we need to be informed about those. What do we want to share with the folks that are with us in particular about the problem of immigration because it is a big problem nowadays? Um, I think the, the, the big thing that we need to uh, share and, and understand is uh, the principle of Catholic social teaching that's called solidarity, which means that um, every life is important on our planet and we have a certain obligation to assist not only those down the street who are in need or in our own communities, but those who are in need around the world. And when we talk about immigration, um, mm -hmm. uh, we have currently 60 million people who have been displaced around the world. And uh, that's a, more people who are displaced than have been displaced since the end of World War II. Mm -hmm. So I think we have a special obligation uh, to look at what's happening around the world. Mm -hmm. And I think Pope Francis has given us some leadership in that regard in terms of expressing his concern and our Lord's concern for displaced people. We know that many uh, dioceses throughout the country, we know that many Catholic Charities Departments around the country and around the world uh, are doing many things for, for immigrants and for those who are seeking asylum and those who are escaping uh, war-torn countries. Um, what, what's some of the, the makeup of the people that, that are immigrants? Uh, who are they? What, can we put a name or a face to them because I think once we do that, then people tend to be more uh, interested in, in relating to people. Does that make sense? Yes. Uh, so who are these people that we're talking about? We're talking about vast numbers of people around the globe, mm -hmm. um, from um, Burmese, uh, that part of the world, who are now in refugee camps, mm -hmm. um, mostly living in Thailand, waiting for the opportunity to immigrate. Uh, we have large numbers of Congolese uh, who are waiting the opportunity to immigrate. And of course, we have very large numbers of Syrians, Iraqis, and Afghani who have been displaced by the wars in the, in the Middle East. Uh, of special concern um, are the Syrians. Um, we have a, a country that had been a country of 24 million people. Uh, mostly highly educated, mm -hmm. and now they are experiencing uh, a civil war. Mm -hmm. um, and even though there have been attempts to bring about a ceasefire, uh, from what I know, at least today, mm -hmm. that ceasefire is not holding. We have um, internally six million Syrians who've been displaced, mm -hmm. and we have another five million Syrians who are living in refugee camps uh, in places like Jordan and Turkey, and uh, who are already determined and have a legal standing as refugees, mm -hmm. as given by the United Nations High Commissioner on Refugees. So of that population alone, we have five million people currently in the queue, eligible to immigrate to another country, to a third country. Um, Turkey alone has about 2.7 million people. And unfortunately, uh, recently there's been the so-called uh, Brussels Accord, uh, which is limiting uh, the number of people who can immigrate to Europe. Sure. So this has increased the need for countries outside of Europe to step up and be able to welcome um, uh, uh, many of these families who are in need. What would be some of the fears that people have, uh, people of means and people who could do something? Uh, what can you say or do to kind of um, dispel some of those fears that these are not horrible people, these are not terrorists, these are people that are seeking asylum because they cannot live in peace in their own land? What, what's some of those fears that you can dispel? Um, the biggest fear, I think, is 
um, that these folks uh, are themselves victims of terrorism and um, they, they, they are seeking a better life for themselves and their children and have the same wants and needs as, as you and I, as any other person uh, living in the U.S. or Northern Europe, Australia, Canada. Um, they have aspirations to uh, be successful and to make a contribution in whatever country is willing to embrace them. Um, the other thing is because of the terrorism in that part of the world, all the refugees coming from that area uh, have 12 step vetting process, uh, very intensive and I think uh, a very good process to make sure that no terrorists escape through the camps. So we're confident that the State Department has done a good job there. And, and we do have to trust our officials to do those things. Um, what, uh, you know, you mentioned earlier on about Pope Francis and his urging and his uh, calling people of faith to reach out. Um, in our final minute of our middle segment, what would you like to uh, say to affirm what Pope Francis is saying? Um, what comes to mind is, is uh, Pope Francis' uh, definition of evangelization. And it's very simple, to make present the kingdom of God in the here and now. And many of these families who find themselves in refugee camps or displaced even within their own country mm -hmm. have experienced almost total hell. And I think all of us have an obligation uh, to make present the kingdom of God for them. Um, it's, it's not something that we uh, do just for ourselves and for our own families and our own communities, but we have to extend that thought, extend that goal uh, to all people to the extent that we can, realizing that yes, there are gonna be human limitations but we shouldn't use those as excuses. Instead, to deep, uh, dig deep into our well of faith in order to live out this principle of Catholic social teaching, that of solidarity and giving respect to all human beings, especially those who have encountered uh, tremendous difficulties mm -hmm. and unbelievable challenges. We're going to talk a little bit more uh, specifically about that, but we're going to take a quick break. Uh, stay with us. We'll be back in a moment. Johnsons enjoy Friday dinners out. Nothing fancy, just time together to reconnect as family. They make sure others eat as well. By giving to Catholic Charities of Youngstown, the Johnsons join other angels who care for those in need, regardless of religion or race. Show your wings with a gift to Catholic Charities, changing lives one family at a time providing housing, emergency financial assistance, senior services, and more. Give now at ccdoy.org. 33 million Americans have descended into poverty. And as their futures fall, so does our nations. Welcome back to Spotlight. I'm talking with Father Dave Bergner, who is a vicar for social concerns for the Diocese of Youngstown. And we've been talking about immigration, but there's many other uh, services that Catholic Charities provides. And I'd like to ask uh, Father Dave to share some of those with us before we get into maybe some more specifics about immigration. Very good. Um, already I mentioned emergency assistance. Um, there are a couple other services that are provided from each of our dozen or so offices. Um, one is called, uh, another is called the First Step Pregnancy and Family Support. Mm -hmm. And people may recall putting coins in baby bottles mm -hmm. to support that program. And that's basis, basically to work with young mothers uh, who find themselves very often with a pregnancy that was unexpected. And we reassure them in terms of the importance of the ch child they bear and all the supports necessary to make sure they have the proper prenatal care and, and the best physicians we can find to help them as their need develops. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important first step pregnancy and family support program. 
Another uh, program that we provide is senior support. And that means uh, we'll do in-home assessments of senior citizens to assess their needs and make sure that if at all possible we can bring those services to them or uh, we can connect them to other uh, senior services within their respective communities. Uh, we don't want any senior citizen uh, to be hurting and living sure. alone without the supports that this program has, has provided. And then, of course, uh, in different, uh, we all, uh, different areas of, of the diocese, we have different services. Uh, in uh, uh, Mahoning and Columbiana uh, counties, uh, we, we provide for the homeless and have outreach workers to the homeless. Um, we have, um, in Ashtabula County, uh, a, a unique service of representative payee service. This is for people with developmental disabilities who can no longer handle their finances. Uh, we have workers with, working with them and their families to help them manage and live uh, in the community. Um, and, and so those are just some examples of the various services that we provide. We have two senior uh, 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 centers, uh, one in Louisville and another in East Liverpool. So a lot of the services we provide in different parts of the diocese are there because of the local need and, and in cooperation with the local lay leaders in that community. So there's a little different complexion to each of the mm -hmm. services based on where they're located and what the needs of that particular communi community happens to be. Sure, and I've often uh, thought and, and try to preach that um, wherever people are in need, whether it's across the street or across the ocean, it really becomes our, our need to, to respond to that because, uh, and I hate to say this, but it's true, we really have no right to call ourselves the followers of Jesus if we don't respond to these needs. Um, and the needs sometimes get to be overwhelming and, uh, and vast. But for the folks that are with us, they want to help. And we know that Catholics around our diocese, around our country, around our world have been extremely generous uh, over the centuries uh, for social needs and concerns. Um, what are some specifics, let's say in the area of immigration, that the folks that are with us might be able to do? Uh, is there a website they can go to to help? Is there a phone number they can call? Uh, who do they get in touch with if they would like to offer some assistance? Of course, um, I will be giving out our own website here shortly and we can uh, connect them to whatever link is necessary uh, to meet a specific uh, organization. Uh, the two of that are, are probably, I would recommend Googling them, would be the Catholic Relief Services, uh, and which we also have a branch of here in our diocese. Um, they're important because they uh, provide uh, the staffing in the refugee camps in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. So they're heavily involved in that uh, uh, migrant crisis that we see on our TV screens or read about in our newspapers. To support CRS is very important. When we talk and or look at local initiatives, we also have an organization called the Catholic Campaign for Human Development. Mm -hmm. uh, that is very much involved in our community and, uh, and, uh, and so they too uh, would be a place to go uh, f to provide assistance. In addition to what we do locally as Catholic Charities, of course, we have annually the Bishop's Appeal. Uh, Two-thirds of that go directly to Catholic Charities in direct service. Uh, the other third uh, helps other diocesan activities like family life and religious education. So we're very dependent, in a way, on the success of that appeal. Sure. Um, and people, you know, if they feel uh, bl that they want to give to the appeal, they don't have to wait until after Pentecost uh, or before Pentecost. They can give any time to that appeal. Right. Um, so those are certain ways. And if, if you want to know what's happening in your specific area, be it Portage, Star County, or wherever you live, uh, you can find us and that activity on our website. 
would, which would be www.doi, Diocese of Youngstown, CCC, Catholic Charities Corporation, dot org. And Very they would find the various links that I've talked about relative to the Catholic Charities Agency in their neighborhoods. You know, it's interesting because when we talk about needs, and especially human need, um, for some reason those have gotten uh, greater. You know, I, I speak with many people who uh, work with you in Catholic Charities, and uh, and I've often asked, you know, is are things getting better or or what? And many times they say, well, things unfortunately are getting worse. We're we're uh, helping more and more people because the need is getting greater and greater. Why do you think that is? I think um, primarily locally in Northeastern Ohio, um, it's, it's our economy that hasn't recovered mm -hmm. as well as in other parts of either Ohio or the country. Mm -hmm. And we have to come face to face with that. And one of the new projects we just launched in all of our offices is called Project Assisi. And the goal is to go beyond the immediate need of that client, let's say for rental assistance as an example, and to work with them and develop a relationship long term, perhaps three to six months, to see if we can get to some of the root causes of why they came to our office in the first place. So we're very optimistic that with this new approach that we will see fewer repeat client families because we were able to spend the time with them necessary to bring about significant change and have a positive impact in their situation. It could be that they're underemployed mm -hmm. and need a job that can give them a living wage. Sure. It could be that they need to access health insurance because they've been paying for that out of pocket yeah. when there are other options available to them. Mm -hmm. It could be that they're, op they're uh, eligible for certain entitlements that we can help them achieve. So I think when we look at why are there more, I, I think we have to look to the economy as one root cause um, I think we also have to look to, um, you know, p people uh, and their network of relationships. You know, what kind of supports do they have? Uh, if they don't have them within their families or in their communities, often they'll come to us seeking that support. Father David Bergner, thank you so much for being with us. It's been my pleasure being with you. And thank you for being with us. Have a good day and God be with you. Spotlight has been a production of CTNY, the Catholic television network of Youngstown. Your program host was Father James Corda.